thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, my name is Leah Louis Chivije. I want to introduce my Bala here. Uh, many of you know him already, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Alec Tapoti. Thank you, Alec, for being here. And I want to acknowledge that his sons are here as well. Lenny and Alec Jr. sitting up the back here. Thank you very much. Before, I just want to begin by acknowledging that we're on the country of the Gadigal people, on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, um, on unceded Aboriginal land, always will be Aboriginal land. Uh, this is the first time I've done this. Um, I want to say I am, again, I'm honoured to be holding this event with Alec here because if you've already bought my book and you've seen the first sentence of the, um, uh, the introduction, it, his name is, he, his name appears in, in like, I don't know, it's maybe the sixth word or the seventh word, but there is Mr. Alec Tapoti. So I feel incredibly honoured that Alec is able to be here. Um, let me see. Uh, there's a few people I want to acknowledge uh, before we get into our kind of conversation, people who couldn't be here tonight. Um, Jeremy Beckett, who's been unwell, we, he was hoping he could be here and he sent me a text at about 5.30 to say he just doesn't have the strength yet to be here, but he is with us in spirit, which we know. Um, and he sends his best. Um, and uh, Professor Julia Horne is the other person I want to acknowledge who is the University of Sydney historian and who helped me shepherd what was a doctoral dissertation into, um, into what you see now. Yeah. Um, and the other, I suppose the other key person I want to acknowledge is Dr. Jude Philp. Um, senior curator of the everything in this building. No, <laughs> senior curator of um, natural history and ethnography. Um, and I guess the the other thing I want to say, and I want to I want to thank I want to thank you all for being here because, uh, and it's and it's really it's it's about. Questions I've been asked, and you will see when you read, um, when you read the book, how important family is to the work I do. So I want to acknowledge all my family who were here tonight, and all my friends who came with their family, because uh, for us um, in the Torres Strait, it's and I for everywhere families, families build. Places, families are the um, belonging to a f belonging to families builds villages, and you build you build from villages. We have islands, from islands we have. Um, I, I don't even know what to say, but it is it. Uh, family is so important, and I'm just so impressed that so many people came here tonight with family because this is what. Um, my work speaks to, speaks from, and speaks to, and speaks f and speaks about the transmission of cultural knowledges, um, which happens in families all the time. So, and many of the stories that I try to retell are stories that families across the Torres Strait have told to each other for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. Yeah. So there is something. There is something that is beautiful that is replicated in the presence, the presence of you all here tonight. So thank you very much. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, our work. Uh, and I want to start with, I guess I can just start, can I, with my... So you will recognise this as the book, that, the image that's on the cover. And I've, um, so this is, this is important for me, because is, is, is it a shark, is it a crocodile, is it both, why is it both? So, um, so this is one of the masks that, oh, yes, please, can you turn off your phones? <laughs> Anne-Marie? Anne-Marie? 
Oh, family's calling. Oh, the daughter. Oh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Um, this, is a, this is a mask that I spent a lot of time sitting with and staring at and thinking about and working really closely with Uncle Dimple Barney, um, to whom this book is dedicated. Uh, he, is, uh, he, he passed away towards the end of my research, um, but he, were it not for him, I would never have done this work. So he and I spent a lot of time talking about this very mask which, is, uh, um, which was taken from Mabyog in the 1880s. Um, I've got to resist the urge to lecture you because I now I'm standing at the front of the room and I have a PowerPoint. <laughs> so, but I will, I will resist the urge to do that. So, so just a couple of things. Um, are you going to work for me? I should turn you on. Oh, there we go. So that's just a close. I, I wanted you to see the how stunning this work is. Yeah, this um, this mask is the beautiful um, golden trevally fish on there. The turtle shell work, the incision with the lime in it that that makes that pop. You know, the whiteness pops out. The shell there, the, those cowrie shells that have been cut off at the base and put on. Which kind of replicate the denticles on a on an actual yeah shovel nose uh, shovel nose ray, um, and just the beauty of that kind of turtle shell. Um, and then I'm going to go to here because this and and Alec will talk about this I'm sure. So this mask has inspired so many of us. To do to work with it and think about it and to sit with it in different ways, um, and one of my I've been I've been following the work of Alex work for such a long time, um, and 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 I think it was in 2012 with my cousin, where is she Mary Louis, where I put up your hand she's there at the back so we so. The thing that has fascinated me about Alex's work um, is how he, uh, how, uh, what is the word? You're just, it's like you're a, you, you just work in so many different mediums, Alex. And I was so, I think the, when you made those massive Mawa masks and um, they were on exhibition in Canberra, and um, we went down for the, um, the opening with Mary, um, my cousin there, Sida and Mary, and um, saw you perform, saw those masks on the, on the hanging in the gallery. It, it was just mind-blowing, yeah. Because the thing about these objects that are sitting in storerooms and museums around the world on shelves, um, what they're denied is their, their power. Um, what they're denied is their connection to the people from whom they were taken. Yeah. Um, so, so for me, the work of Alec in making masks like this, in making other masks and performing in them, is also for me, wonderful for educating um, the broader community about, about the purposes of these, of these things, of these masks. You know, they're not works of art. They are, oh, thank you, UTS people. I see you all there. Um, they, um, yeah, they speak to, they speak to history. Yeah. They speak to cultural history. They speak to family history. Um, and I'm going to, I thought I'd ask you some questions, Alex, yeah. Alec, but I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, shall we sit down? Yeah, let's, I don't know. I feel like I'm like a talk show. A talk show host. All right, let's, I'm going to put that down. And I'm going to leave that there. Okay, we're not going to echo here, are we? No feedback? A little bit? No? All right. Oh, okay. All right. So, Alec. This is like Alec and Leah. <laughs> um, 
You may have seen Alec and Albert. This is, this is, the, this is the, this will be the next one. Alec and Leah. Um, Alec, can you, I remember coming to see you, see you in Cairns when you were working on this mask, um, when you were still living in Cairns, 2014. You, um, we went out through your carport, and you remember you had that work, you had that workshop area out the back. And you said to me, um, you just had this mask and it was, you were starting on it and all, and as soon as I walked in, I saw it on the, on the horse, or not a horse, what do you call, what do carpenters call that? Horse. Yeah? A horse, yeah? A horse, yeah. And it was just, it was there, it was, it was, you were starting to work on it, the shape of it was there, I just saw this kaigas, this shovel nose just sitting there. And... I was in awe. So can you talk to me about, tell us about that, that your process of getting to that and... Wow. Well, um, oh, well, kula isang ay lakapasin, ay nabugay ito, kuy kumabay yung acknowledgement to the Aboriginal people of this country. Um, and biggest also, Sisi, for having me here tonight. Talk about timing. Wow. Perfect. Uh, good timing. Um, well, wang aunel alik, my name alik. So, um, Masks. Uh, I'm, I'm in the Western Torres Strait, Bad Lagbad. My ancestors from Mabiag, uh, my paternal side, and my maternal side from Saibai. Um, you're probably familiar with Saibai Island dances. Dances. They did a good uh, show at the National NADOC. I don't even know where it was. Somewhere. Where was the National it was NADOC? In Melbourne. Melbourne. The NADOC Ball in Melbourne. NADOC, yeah. yeah. Um, but. Um, so I'm a fluent language uh, speaker, Kalalagawya. So anything and everything I do when it comes to masks, um, I speak in my language in order to connect with my spiritual ancestors. Um, for example, any mask I make, the eyes, they come on last because every eye I, yet I attach, I speak in language, the Walman, Latin Walmai, I mean, I will awaken you. Another I, I will awaken you, Latin Walmai. And then from then onwards, um, to me, as an artist, it is now alive. Well, semi-alive, if that's a term I can use, because it is brought to life spiritually, as you mentioned before, when we perform it. Wow. I remember sitting in a panel uh, in London one time, uh, 2015, I think. They asked me about masks artifacts throughout Europe and, and they ask me, what are your thoughts on these masks? They have to go back to the original places where they come from. Well, to me, I, my reply, I think, confused everybody, all the cur curators. I bespeak them, you look and have all the masks. You could be collected. You've done a good job preserving it. What's wrong with that? I understand that our answer, uh, our Children, they can't just jump in the bus and go and visit it. And that's one disadvantage because it's the other side of the world. But to me, every artifacts in museums, this was my reply to them, curators in, in, in England, and every artifacts, especially masks, they're all dead material. It only comes to life when a Zenatkes Island or Torres Strait Islander walks in the room, that when it comes to life. So we have that spiritual connection. Um, so. But yeah, mask making, um, I, when I started fiberglassing, I fell in love with the transparency simply because it mirrored the karar, mm. the turtle shell. And it took me like a couple hours sitting there thinking, you know, I caught many turtles before when I was young. I was taught by my wadwams, maternal uncles to catch turtle because it's part of our lifestyle. Artist, I could easily go back home and just hunt the Oxbill turtle and make masks. I'm a modern figure. I could sell it to the museum. But then, as an artist, I am bounded by cultural protocol. So I can't just exploit that and open gates for every other artist coming to do the same. It's against our law to just catch the thing, just to sell it to a museum or a gallery. So that's when I come across fiberglass, when I saw that, wow. And that's what led me to 
you know, play with stains. Oh, this is it. And that's the, that was my attempt to try and get close to turtle shell mask. Um, but like Leah, this is my, uh, one of my favorite, I put it number one. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's, uh, no, no, sorry, not this one, but the, the, the original one. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the original one. Um, maybe, maybe there's three there on top, but this is the one, the top top, on the <laughs> nose. Um, simply because um, when I make this one here, I call it kaigasi usul. Kaigasi usul, it means the... Uh, um, Milky way. The, mil yeah. yeah, no, no, no. When the, oh, the trail. The trail, the murky water or whatever, yeah. the, the trail, the dust underwater when the kaiga swim. And in our stories, that's what created the Milky Way. So we call the Milky Way the kaiga si usu. And when I saw the original one, I fell in love with it. I was like, wow, this is powerful. Um, and being an artist, I feel like, um, you know, we can talk about old masks. We can talk about old Zamyak, any traditional uh, cultural uh, costumes. We can talk about the stuff, the artifacts that the ancestors created. We could talk about all day long till the cows come home. But it's our job to actually continue the practice rather than just talk about the past. So that was the reason I went into masks, uh, using modern or contemporary, mm -hmm. contemporary material. Um, and, um, but follow the same uh, laws, I guess, yes. that applied to the ancient stuff. The mask I make with modern material, they are not sacred, they are spiritual. The old ones are sacred and spiritual, but the ones I make, they are not sacred, but I apply the same uh, protocol that what I've learned from uncles and uh, grandfathers that have told me about the ancient stuff. So, um, yeah, I yes. can talk about so many things. <laughs> but that's this one here, Kaiga Suisul. Going back to that visit, um, I'm going to be honest, I made two. I, made, I originally made one. And I think... I think I was uh, talking to my uh, Michael Kershaw, my agent, sitting on the far right here. Uh, we were planning on entering into the Telstra Awards. But then I thought, you know what? I mean, if it goes to Telstra, it's a national exhibition, somebody's going to come and grab it. Some museum is going to grab it. But I really wanted to go to the BM. So that's when I thought, oh, I made two. So every time I had visitors, I hide the other one around the laundry. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, and then we sent that one off, and then finally, it's like, it was meant to be, uh, I can't remember her name. Listen, Gay? Listen. Oh, Lisanne Bolton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They visited us, uh, me, in Cairns, and I showed them, they were like, we really need to have this there to complement the original. Um, and to me, it's important that we continue. Um, a quick story about when I went with the Accelerate program, leadership program to the UK, we wrote our own uh, schedule. So mine was just to visit Mark specifically from Edinburgh, Glasgow, Scotland, wherever, come down, uh, Pitts Rivers and all the, all the you know. Um, and I spoke to the mask there. I had two, one lady from, one indigenous sissy from Melbourne and one from, one Noongar from West. They wait outside, I went inside. Uh, this was at the storage the, for the BM. And I promised, uh, I think the, the, not the curator, the lady looking after, she must have thought I wasn't, I was not all there. I, I was promising the mask that I want to come back um, and show you. The ancestors, the artists are all back home, back in the Torres Strait. But the artistry, I want to show the artistry because it's spiritual that we still practice that. This was 2011, I think. So many, it's time to <laughs> London. Um, <laughs> Three years later, or a year later, I put a team together, Zugubal dancers, and three years later, we perform a spiritual, just for the mask, lock down the whole Cambridge, everybody wait outside, 
and we performed just for the mask, and that was my <clears throat> SO. Thank you for the inspiration that I received from the art wow, yes. mask. Art and of mask that's the, there's a photograph of that wow, in just, the book. In the book, yes. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was, uh, yeah, I, have many, I had many, many, uh, um, I don't know, strange, weird, scary um, encounters when making masks. Another example, the one at the National Gallery. You, you know the one you talk about? The National Gallery? Yep, the yeah, we had the mask hanging. There was one there um, in the middle. Um, before they acquired it, I, I, I had it at home. I was living in a flat on Horn Island. I made it, and I was half done. And I was home alone. My family was in Cairns. I was in the other room, it was in the lounge on a couple of milk crates. I was watching Michael Jordan DVD on the mattress on the floor. <laughs> and I could see in you know, a corner of my eye, my shadowy stuff around it. I, sorry, uh, jump, jump, I jumped ahead there. I had visitors come visit, I don't know which visitors, curators, I, I don't know. They come visit, so I'm here, yeah, 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 this is my mask. So I got a bit of blue, uh, blue tech. Blue tech, uh -huh. blue tech, the blue thing. I stuck the eyes on. I showing them this. Oh, I was like, wow. They were like, wow. And then they left. Then I forgot to take the eyes off. <laughs> I'm here watching Michael Jordan, trying to focus, like watch his moves and and these shadows around the mask on the crate. So it was this high, and I'm on the floor in the other room. I come out. I look around. Light coming in the window. Maybe it's. The street light, I turned off the fan because I thought maybe the shadow turned off. Ah, I can see this. Ah, I try to catch it, but I can't. Ah, I'm swearing. And hey, I go outside, I speak in language. Come lie down. I keep on pausing. I see these people dancing around it. Short people. I was like, hey. Then I realized that, oh, shoot. I forgot the eyes. I took the eyes on, put the sheet over, go lie down, and good night sleep. So I had many, many um, spiritual encounters. Um, I really believe in um, the, spirit, the spiritual um, side of things when it comes to, uh, well, we, we call it in the West, adazpar, means face of the outside. Mawa is a term used for ancient people. Uh, only they wear their mask. Somehow we take that word and now we call the masks mawa, mawa mask. But wow, many, many. That's one or two, two examples of my, <laughs> I suppose, uh, encounter with the spiritual ancestors. Yeah. That, wow. Yes. And this is the, um, the, the thing. So there was a question I had yesterday for a radio interview um, about how did, I, how, how did I decide that I would work with masks? Um, and the, the, the only answer I could give, and, it, and I did not know it at the time, is that um, it's not that I chose the masks, but my sense is that I, the masks chose me. It's, yeah, if that makes sense. Um, and working with Uncle Dimple made that, took that to another level. So the Kaigas is uh, a primary totem for... Um, one of the Mabyog clan groups and what um, Bala is talking about here, where, the, where the, that, um, that trail. Mm. So, the, so Kaigas will sit on the ocean, on the floor, of the, on the ocean floor, and it will, sh it will shake itself into the sand to conceal itself. Yeah? And then when it need, wants to strike or needs to strike, it will. Um, but Uncle Dimple will talk about that sitting quietly um, as also sitting with humility. Yeah. Um, and he talked a lot about that, you know, that sense of humility is, is, um, is reflected in the clan group that has this, has Kaigas as its primary totem, yeah. So there is this, so for me it was like working with people and talking with people like Alec, like Uncle Dimple, to um, understand the relationship between the material that is turtle shell, the animals that it represents, um, the clans that it speaks to and for, the stories that are told. It's th the stories that are told about the animal and the people and the place and the interconnectedness. Um, 
and trying to tease that out and look for it in, and, it, I, and I would be looking for it everywhere. Everywhere where I saw something that had turtle shell or said something about turtles in Torres Strait, I would look to sit and, and look for something that spoke to um, the meaning of the masks to islanders. Yeah? And that's one of the things that was really important. And I think it's, and it, for me, it comes to really strongly in Alex's work and the work of many artists, is to connect with the knowledge that comes with these masks of the time before they were taken. Um, before they were removed and put into institutions and, like Alec is saying, um, where, they, where they are just objects. They are just things. Um, and they can just sit there um, and people can look at them and think about them as this amazing art from these people who we have no idea who they are or where they're from, but aren't they beautiful works of art? Um, but for islanders, and this is one of the things that I think uh, there is this kind of there is this kind of if there is a, a place of pilgrimage for islanders, it must be the the museum at the University of Cambridge, where so much of the material had and took ended up. And it is like I don't, it's like when you go there and you look at the register, like the visitor book, you just see all these names of island people, you know, dancers, artists, singers, academics, students. Football players. <laughs> it's it's nuts, but it's but it's it's become such a um, such an important place for islanders. And and who would have thought when I think Haddon, who was doing his work there, um, was doing it from the point of view of a sad salvage anthropologist, thinking that whole you know so which meant he want, he was collecting every anything and everything he could get his hands on. Because in that time, the belief was that islanders would die out that there would be no islanders anywhere in the world, but at least somewhere in the world would have all our things. Yeah. So, it's, um, so, yeah, it's interesting to think about it um, kind of mm. in that way. Mm. Mm. Wow. I'm, I'm, I don't have a, my timer on me. Do you oh. have, can you tell me what the time is, Alec? Uh, it is um, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. All right. I, so I have some other... Um, I, I wondered to maybe get questions from the floor so we, we c you can ask us about things you really want to know and, you know, otherwise you'll just have us telling you what we want to tell you. But um, let me just show. So the masks that I, just to give some sense of the stuff that's in the book, but you'll see it anyway um, if you buy the book. Um, <laughs> So the islands I've circled are the places where uh, the masks that I write about come from, were taken from. Um, and I only look in any depth at maybe six or seven masks, and some of them in more depth than others, like the, the shovel nose, like the kaigas. Um, so in terms of how many turtle shell masks are there around the world, um, I think... I think somewhere between maybe 100 and 120. It's hard to know because there's a lot that would have gone into private collections. And I once met someone who's, who said very quickly, um, I was given one. I was uh, at, a, at a function in downtown in Sydney. Um, so, there is, so I don't know where, they, where uh, those private ones are. Some of the ones I do know when I get kind of um, people who... So there are curators who will say to me... Um, you, you, haven't, um, you haven't found out about this mask from me, and then they will tell me where that mask, where a mask has gone through private, kind of through private hands, yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, so, so, yes, so kind of the places where the one I, ones I write about are from. Um, and then just some kind of images of some of the ones that I have that are in the book. So this one from, taken from Yam, made by Mino of Yam, taken by Haddon in 88 and given to the, or acquired by the, um, the British Museum the year after. Um, another Mabyog mask. And one of the things that is really, um, it, what is really interesting is we talk about Western Island masks and Eastern Island masks. So people will talk about this mask here with the face and the bird. So the masks with animals as well as human faces are often talked about as... Um, as Western Island masks, 
whereas the face masks are talked about as East Island masks. And, pr and pretty well it's based on where they were collected from. Yeah. Um, so all the masks that were collected from the Eastern Torres Strait kind of look like this one, except there's, I think there may be one or two that don't. Um, and the Western Island masks are predominantly human and animal, yeah? um, or just animal yeah, as well. Um, this is a mask that is here at the University of Sydney. Um, it's not been on exhibition since this building's gone up, but it has been on exhibition a few times when it, in the Alma Clay, and it will be again in an exhibition in 2025 which will be the 150 year anniversary of it being collected um, by, um, by William John Maclay. Um, and then another uh, Arab mask that's in the book, um, collected in 1845 um, from, from Arab. So yes, that's human hair on, on, a, on that mask. Um, what do you th what do you think, Alex? You, are you happy to take questions, or you, do you want to give them another yarn? I I can yarn all night. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, wow. Um, uh, uh, when when just when I had uh, when I had the, when I was based uh, living in Cairns, I put that dance team together, Zugubal dances. Zugu means spiritual ancestor, Zugubal plural, spiritual ancestors. It was all men's business and stuff. We all boys, we do this, do that. And what we noticed that every time we'd attend festivals and, and you know, even Kayaf at one stage, when we danced them, we saved them mawa, ma, the mask dance for last. When we perform, um, kids sitting at the front, um, they, they cry. So, since I moved to Badu, uh, 2015, October 4, I moved Badu. Um, obviously, the boys, you know, some of them went to the mines. We, 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 we did a couple of trips after. I think we went, we did Monaco and we did somewhere, yeah. Um, but um, uh, after that, I put their mask away because, um, not because of that, I was scaring children because that's part of the, I, I want the mask, that, that's the effect you want. Not, not trying to scare children, but, but that's, that's what we want um, as warriors or as, not sorcerers, but as spiritual people. Um, we want the audience to feel that we are spiritual people. So uh, we felt that, you know, maybe the kids were not supposed to be too close, even though when we dance, we come close to the audience. Um, but um, since then, I invested in my sons, um, Lenny and Alex, sitting at the back. Um, I trained them at home on our land and um, without masks because, because they were too young, come, come, come. But I just trained them the, the technique of dancing for masks alone. And now they're almost tall like me. They're ready. Um, I've um, taken the mask out from the boxes, and we will perform when the... We we'll probably wait till a certain star in September. Um, we will perform just us as a as a family uh, on on Badu Island. So, um, you know, today performances are, I suppose, in this era, performances are for entertainment. Um, I I am really pa uh, not passionate, wrong word. I'm really um, st strong, I think, about performing at home, not for, um, uh, not for an audience, not for an audience because yeah. there's no audience there, <laughs> um, but to celebrate the, the seasons because of what some of the masks were used for. Yes. And, and it's not something well. that, um, it's, yeah, and I think what you're talking about is not something that people know that well about because it is, and I, and I don't even know across the Torres Strait how much it is practiced where people will perform not just for an audience, for a tombstone ceremony or, wow. For, wow. or for an event, an event. Wow. That, that performance becomes what you're saying, what I'm hearing you say is about um, celebrating or, or observing yep. 
um, observing what is happening uh, in terms of season and seasonal wow. change, wow. but also as a way of passing knowledge mm. Yeah? Mm. Um, wow. and as a way of kind of connecting with this, the spiritual, connecting to this, the, um, the spirituality that is carried wow. by, wow. by right. that, that is wow. carried by objects. Wow. Yeah. I remember we were doing, or we were in a queue, uh, a line. I think we were third in line to perform at the cultural festival on TI. Actually, we were second in line, and then we ended up fifth in line. Um, we, had, we were doing a moon dance, and the moon was sitting southeast. Just if, for those of you who've been to TI, the moon was just coming up. And I didn't organize the boys, oh, we step and let this island go first. Oh, come back more, let this wait for the moon. It just seemed to happen that we were second, then we were fifth. And when we got out there on the oval, thousands of people, I apologized to the crowd that we were going to turn the, our back and perform to the moon instead of the crowd. And I think that they found it really interesting. But it's going back to my, um, I suppose, uh, connection with, wow, yeah. oh, I wish I could travel in time. What we, we, we only, um, you know, knowledge is passed to practice and, and, and and um, yeah. orally or cultural information. Um, but then you have the spiritual connection. Like, um, yeah, so we do that. And I think it's, 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 it's more meaningful and power, powerful because otherwise it just becomes an entertainment. Wow. Rather yeah. than a connection for the proper purpose. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've thought many times about the uh, death dance. Um, I know of some. Um, but um, then you start to question because all our death ceremonies is all Christian based. Um, me, being a non-Christian person, because of my cultural belief, I, um, I, I've, I've gone to a stage where I, I speak publicly in front of my elders, and uh, I don't care if they think oh, he's not right because he should be. We should be praising the Christian God, and I stand where I stand because of my cultural belief that where my ancestors were and that's what guided me to make masks so that's where my path is well not stopping people to to, to choose whatever religion it's just that to me when it comes to mask it's a separate it's a different realm from anything introduced yeah well so I, yeah yeah thank you as always alec you just give me so much to think about <laughs> and how to and to and especially to think to thinking about how to write, how to write about it in a way that um, that honors the knowledge, but also protects what can't be um, what can't be shared. Yeah. So it's always this double double edge, and I and it's and it's you're kind of skating with that all the time. Wow. So even like yesterday, I got a message saying, "What other ob mask images can we use to promote the book?" And I said, you can't, just use what's the cover because that's all I've got permission for. But there's others in the book. And I said, well, yes, but I've, I don't have permission to show others. Just the one on the cover is like, are you sure? Are you sure? The publisher, the publicist is like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if Uncle, if Uncle Dimple was here, he would say, tell them, tell them. <laughs> you, you have to, you have, and it is, and for us, it's that constant kind of pushing back with against the want that people have to know, but also um, the responsibility we have to only share what others can know. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, so that, and that can be a very, yeah, that mm, mm. can be frustrating for people because mm. it's for, you know, um, mm, people mm. just, um, yeah, it, yep. I'll just leave it there. It's, it's frustrating. Um, um, there was a point I wanted to make that, um, that coming off what you were saying about, oh, maybe that is the point. And it is like how researchers work with our, uh, especially that, especially the knowledge that is, that people kind of think sits in the realm of um, sorcery or magic mm. and how to, and, and, so, so there are some kind of, you know, uh, 
I won't, ma I won't mention any names, but it's like there, if, when, when people want to know, it's like when people want to know more than even I know, um, that, and even if I knew, I wouldn't be able to tell them. But like there is this idea that, um, that if you, you can't tell me because you don't know it. It's like, no, <laughs> it's like, it's not that. <laughs> mm. I can't tell you because you're not supposed to know. You're not even supposed to ask me, yeah? So it is that stuff of um, mm. Mm -hmm. how to kind of navigate that is, yeah, is sometimes tricky as an academic, yeah? Um, and what I love about the work of artists is that um, especially the work of, especially the work from Alec and even, um, I think even George Nona, it is that thing of, um, I, what you end up seeing is all that you're going to be able to see. Yeah. And whatever you make of it is completely up to you. And that is that thing of the levels of stories that sit within, that sit within objects. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the work I did a lot with Uncle Dimple in the very beginning was about just an awareness of that, of knowing that, and it is that thing of knowing that silence doesn't mean people don't know. Silence can mean I've got nothing more. There is nothing more I want to tell you about this. Yeah? Or you have no right to know anything more about this. Yeah? And it takes a while, I think, for researchers to pick up that, um, um, that they're not telling me because I can't know. Mm. Like researchers say, oh, even the, a, a guy interview, who interviewed me the other day, he, his interview, he, like, he asked me a lot about things that, and, I, and it sounded like he was talking about the cultural, that there was a, this kind of cultural loss for islanders, that we had lost so much. And, and, you know, I kind of, it was live to air, so I kind of bit my tongue. And I thought, you can't, just because you don't know doesn't mean we don't know. Yeah, but it, yeah, mm. it's that kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, um, yeah, you know, I, I like what you say. <laughs> um, I think one of the, when it comes to mask making, or even not just mask making, um, I was telling some of the boys, um, we all have our, some of the boys on Badu, some cousins, we all have our own sort of shacks or properties on the beach, um, our getaway spots from the village, whatever you want to call it. Um, we were talking about rock paintings the other day. We have some rock paintings on Bad, on Badu Island. Um, and we were talking about tourism. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that will attract. And um, I said to them, look, <clears throat> um, I sort of went back to what I was saying before, that mask or ancestors make mask come, then you finish, then you have this era where either they were hidden, thrown, burnt, or taken, whatever, or traded, or whatever. Um, we have to continue that practice regardless. Um, and it's the same. I was telling them that they don't have to see the ancient rock painting. They, have, they can see your rock painting because we are from the art, we are artists from them, the ancestors. Um, so it's about um, continuing the practice from, especially for us men, artists, the remaking, making headdresses, mask making, making um, others parul, and um, yeah, I, I guess it goes for any art practice where we, we have to continue. I like, I had a, I had a quick read. <laughs> um, I, 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 you, you are very correct that um, I, um, people look at my work, they look at the lino um, uh, uh, relief printing uh, with all the intricate patterns and blah, blah, blah. Um, but every time I was making masks like the one you saw up there, I was always comparing myself to the ancestors. I had the advantage of the Dremel too, but for some reason I was always falling short because I had that advantage of that too. I was like, ah, shoot, how the heck? I can do that, I can do that easy. But they didn't have this, so I fall short. So it's like, ah, oh, man, maybe I will spend six months scraping one turtle shell in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the intricacy that they, the level of um, pattern detail that they had in that time uh, as an artist, I've seen many masks from New York to 
Scotland, wherever, Germany and Switzerland, whatever. Um, to me, they're masky. I like to use the word uh, un unmatched. Unmatched. Yeah, unmatched, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. People look at my work going, wow. Yeah. I look at my ancestors' work and go, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. that's what keeps me, keeps my fire burning. And we have a, we have a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, language uh, saying, patamukmik. Patamuk means, patamukmik means you continue to push them firewards in to make sure that fire of the ancestors continue to burn. And that's not just with language, that's with art and any cultural knowledge, I guess, for us to be here today. Yeah. Well, to writing, I must say. Um, the words that capture them thing is different from, from artists who are trying to capture it in a different, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, a, yeah, it's, it's patamukmik. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. And I really do think that my, the, the, my book um, kind of joins the conversations that artists have been having with these masks before I started working on them and thinking about them and writing about them mm. as well. So, mm. And yeah. I mean, so I'm indebted to Alec and oh. many others, of course, <laughs> who you'll, and you'll read about some of them, Uncle Kenny Thide um, among them. Um, wow. Yeah, you'll, you'll read about them. So we might, I, I think we might take some questions. Um, and thanks, Craig. So Craig's got a mic, and there's a question from Jackie. Hi, Jackie. I've uh, just, I remember coming to, I think, one of your first talks some years ago when I started at Sydney. We were talking, it's just remarkable. I can't wait to get my hands on that book. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. And that connection between what um, what we want to do with what we know and um, who can have access to it. I, I love that. I've been recently working with my own community with a song from the archives and we just love singing it as our own community group, elders mm -hmm. and youth on country. It's a snow song and it's been snowing quite effectively. It's a seasonal <laughs> song. <sighs> the last two years we've sung it. We know it's a song you sing under a full moon or during the time of full moon in sort of late March, April. And it, I, I, I feel that joy that you have with making these wonderful things. And um, I'm wondering, though, is there going to be some repatriation of these masks? Um, I, I, I was interested how you said that it was both of you that, you know, that they've been protected in some ways by being in Sorry. the collections. Sorry. That's my family. <laughs> <laughs> Please ring me, turned off. No, it's not family. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if there are thoughts about um, bringing them back to the Torres Straits where they could be. I feel kind of like it must be awful for them to be away. I feel you've made them feel so alive to me yeah. over the time yeah. I've listened to you. Yeah, yeah, good, so. yeah good question, Jackie. I, <sighs> repatriation is not something I ever talked about in the work that I did and and that was deliberate because I and I because I wanted to see if people would ask me about repatriation I mean uh, whether islanders would ask me about the repatriation and no one ever did no one talked to no one said anything to me that I, the people who I talked with about the masks people wanted to know where they were what they looked like that I would show them lots of photographs we would talk about them um, but no one talked about returning them, and, I'm, and I've talked about a few, and I've talked about this to a few other people. So, and one of, I guess, one of the things is, um, and Jude and I have had this conversation, and 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 Matt Pohl as well around, um, if there was um, a list of things that people wanted back first, it would be ancestors. Yeah. So it's returning ancestral remains is is like number one. And then we might talk about other things. Yeah. So it's that. So it's. So I think masks sit on a on a list somewhere um, with in people's minds. But it's never been verbalised to me, and I kind of just, you know, wait for the masks to tell me or people to say something about them. And it is a, it is a, um, and it's a kind of it's a it's been a it's a slow 
process of just, from, from my point of view, suggesting things, you know, and, and waiting to see if it takes. Yeah, because it's, yeah, I mean, it would be easy for me to make up a list and say, yep, we'll go, <laughs> we'll go and track these ones down and bring them back. But it's not, they yeah. don't belong to me. They belong to us. Mm. And then, and, and the us have to work out what that means for all of yeah. us. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that question, Jackie. Who, Jude's got a question. I just wondered if you could both talk about turtles. Turtles. Oh. Turtles. 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 <laughs> oh. Turtles. You can read about it, Jude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have already. I. I um. Well, you go. You go first. <laughs> uh, um, well, it's a cultural practice for green turtle as a delicacy back home. Um, we have, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, our ancestors have taught us managing, management plans long before. Um, <clears throat> and I think we, we, it became a regional not issue, a discussion about, you know, taking too much turtle and dugong, but the stats showed a totally different um, reason for its, uh, what's the word? Decline. Decline, yeah. Wow. yeah. But then you go up. Um, obviously, ghost net come into play. Um, boats coming across the strait, uh, wrecking or demolishing the feeding ground. Mm. Um, so, um, but uh, turtles, um, Unua obviously is the one with the thick, the, the oxbill with the thick, um, uh, do you call it carapace? Or Carap the, the, yeah, carapace. Thing. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it's a very valuable, I was telling somebody before that I have some at home. I think, yeah, I have some at home and I, um, um, they're so perfect that you could just glue it together and make, a, make this amazing mask. But I sort of don't want to um, fiddle around with it yet because I'm enjoying this, these modern mate uh, materials. Um, but um, the old people or the ancient ancestors, uh, sort of related to turtle, they didn't just catch the unua uh, or catch the turtles um, for the sake of, oh, we're going to catch this so we can make a mask. And that's it. No. It was for other reasons, but nothing went to waste. Obviously, the carapace was made masks for rituals and part of sacred ceremonies or rituals, this and that. Um, so it's a, it's a cultural practice, mm. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's uh, because there's so many things we could talk about, wow. I think, Jude. <laughs> and I know you're just being mischievous. Um, but one of, the, one of the really puzzling things for me in the collection in Cambridge is, um, so is also bone, bone material, like turtle bone material. And there is something that um, is described and it, it's written in the register as turtle bone and it's been kind of, and there's kind of discs that must be, I've got no idea where they're from but it says it's turtle bone, and it's described as castanet. So you know, so you know what, it, so you know the Spanish, and, and if you were to do that with them, that's what you would, and, I'd, and where does it come from? Torres Strait. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, castanet, Torres Strait? So, so it's an interest, so it's, it, it does, there are, I, I maybe, well, <laughs> there are many rabbit holes, <laughs> I discovered, doing this work, of things that kind of can take you places where you can just sit there and stare. Like, that's me, sitting in Cambridge, looking at this, thinking, what the heck? Jeanette, that is just mad. Like, why? Yeah. So there's, so, so there, yeah, so there is lots of that, that well, maybe not lots, there's, but, but there's quite a few um, of those kinds of examples as well of turtle and stuff that's been collected and somehow attributed to the Torres Strait. And then given that name that isn't even a, 
the, I don't think, yeah. is there a Western Island word for castanet? I don't think so. For, for what? For castanet. You know, the, it's like the two discs th that make a I, I, I thought sound. she was saying, you castanet. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, ca well, well, castanet. So it's, a, it's like a percussive percussion instrument. What, would you call it an instrument? I guess, yeah. So it, 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 you clack it oh, together. Yeah. So, you know, dancers would... So flamenco dancers. Yeah. Lorraine could give, us an ex, could, give us a, <laughs> could give us an example later. So what... So it's, how is this with the turtle? So it was made of turtle bone. And it's, um, and it's in a museum collection. And it says wow. it's come from, it comes from the Torres Strait. So, uh, so some I, is questioning which part of the turtle. Uh, oh, interesting. So I'm, I'm trying to. We, I know it's the We know every holes. bone it's from like, the turtle. Wow. <laughs> it's made from the bones of a turtle. Yeah. Wow. And turtle is so. It's just ubiquitous across the Torres Strait. So when I was on a on a recent trip and just walking on the reef, I I brought back some turtle shell, um, but I just picked up so much, um, like the flake, like the very thin. It would be the green turtle. Mm a very thin kind of scoot of turtle shell. Um, but everywhere where I was on Coconut Island, walking on the reef, there was like bones and, bones and turtle and shell bones. everywhere. So it's... Yeah. What, what, that's what did, you have a, did you have a particular thing you wanted us to...? Because it's just such a big... It is a very big topic. I was thinking with us and this, the graceful, beautiful creatures that you um, write about and it all... The word gravid always comes to me because that is a word I encountered in your writing gravid. of the mother turtle lumbering up the beach and doing mm. that work and then going back to the sea and just how long they live and how much they are a part of things like uh, Mr. Sagia Passi talking about I wait and I sit to watch them come for the season and just sitting and waiting for that inevitable passage of these yeah. beautiful, graceful animals. Mm, mm. But that was too long a question, so I just said turtle. <laughs> 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 yes. and, and the Eastern Torres Strait, uh, especially a really significant. Maria Dawar, um, which is where my Passi family go back to, um, is a really significant nesting site for, um, for, gr for, for green turtle. Mm. Um, but wow. in all, I've never tried to think. I've never. Oh, I haven't gone enough, gone home often enough. But I've not encountered turtles. Um, I've only encountered them in a saucepan when I've gone home. <laughs> not in the wild. So yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah. Yeah. Um, we have turtles growing up to our camp, laying eggs. Well, I teach my kids. Well, obviously, it's a cultural practice, but. Um, you make sure you teach them that when you take, you only take handful, like, you know, try and scoop the whole nest up and, you know, try and, yeah. Yeah. Ten? Yeah. Ten eggs, we go, we run, we run. Well, it's um, because we, we them, them, the turtle that we come for lay egg there, um, it was from a hatchling from there, I'm going to come back and lay there. Yeah. But, um, I was gonna say my favorite, my favorite um, bone <laughs> of the turtle is that um, from the art, uh, the, the the breast, uh, the the the, bottom, the belly, yeah, the breast, um, not breastplate, the breast bone. Wow, it looks like a hand actually. Oh, yeah, well, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. everyone sees it. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, um, and that represents the star constellation also, the Deal. Wow. But there's a story of, you know, our, our story of Tagai and Kang, the star constellation, the two brothers. They, um, when they were diving, their mm -hmm. uh, spiritual ancestors, Zukubal, they dive. And then um, they had a crew, Kuyu, Rutimal, uh, can't remember the names, um, Tupmur, all their mother, Zukubal, in the Kenu. When they dive, they collect pearl, kabar, and, uh, trochus, mai, pearl shell. Kayar, crayfish, and they had the kusul, the coconut, the, the water bottles back then, um, the kusul, the, not, the, not the whole coconut, just the shell um, uh, with water in it, but hanging the canoe in the water so it stays cool. 
when Tagai jumped back in, he, he bumped it and then he, he, he realized it's empty. So one of the boys must have been drinking it. So he got really pissed off. And as they were coming up, he, he, he speared them. He killed them all, all their mothers, Ugubal. And they floated away. There was blood everywhere before Shah come. Bodies floating, floated away. And that's the symbol of that, that they are, that little breast bone that looked like the body floating away. And that's the puddle of blood. Wow. That's our sort of, I suppose, everything's connected to the stars with us. <laughs> mm. Wow. But wow. I just thought I'd share that. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jude. Um, my brother-in-law up the back there had a question. I noticed uh, that uh, you identified some islands that you've collected art from, or the shells and stuff like that. There are a lot of the artifacts that you found, did they have names of who made them? Or were they just collected and there's no uh, identification who made them. Yeah. Some of, of the masks, of the turtle shell masks, some of them do. Yeah. Um, so, and that's the, kind of just the tedious work of just trying to track um, through the archive all the bits and pieces there are of people who've gone to different places and what they've recorded. So some of them do. And um, the Kaigas mask... Um, uh, it's, it was, it, Uncle Dimple and I spent quite a bit of time looking at um, the sketches that were made by different islanders for Haddon in looking to see. And I think others had also worked, worked through that to get to the point of, of working out who we believe made that mask. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for, for some things, but other things, especially things that were taken maybe... Um, prior to Haddon um, arriving and collecting in the way that he collected. Because he, he was a zoologist, his training was initially in zoology and then he be went back and became an ethnographer or an anthropologist. But his kind of science training, I think, may have been um, useful, useful for us because of how he documented yeah, the, the material he collected. And it's the same with um, William John Maclay, who went from Sydney in 1875, yeah, as well. So it kind of, so much of it depends on, um, uh, and I, so much of it depends on the purposes that those people had for the th for, for for being there, and what they thought they would do, yeah, uh, with those things. And I think Haddon was really Haddon's work is really important because he he tried he, with collecting things. He also tried to collect the stories associated with those things. And he named the people who gave him the stories. Yeah. So that's it's been kind of so. It's, so they, so he can't, he's left a trail of people to follow that now that islanders today mm -hmm. can say they well, they will look at different things and say oh yes. So if I can um, trace my ancestry back to the time when Haddon was there, then you can start to see well people can start to see where their families might be. Yeah. In that where their families of today might be situated, yeah, in that. So mm. that's, um, so yeah, it is possible, but tedious that, that, work. That, that, you hit my, the nail on the head, what I was thinking. Can people from these islands say, okay, my ancestors, my lineage made this right here. This is your great, 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 great family made this right here. This is it's over here. Yep. Uh, yes, they can. I think, yep. um, to sort of spin out of that is, um, you know, before when, obviously when Haddon went, when he did all the genealogies, we only had, well, they only had one name, no surnames. So today, our surnames uh, of that, like those names. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, the surnames. Um, the surnames are of the names were that were originally the... for only names. Yeah. There's yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. that side of it. But also, and this is something that Jude and I have talked about, is finding is, 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 is um, following the names of women and the, and the names that were... So, and the... Uh, the um, I'm trying to find the right word for it. But, but following, following the line of women 
is is probably the prime way of establishing that connection back because so many um, so many foreign men came in and it's it's that thing of um, when I, I gave a paper a few weeks ago when I was overseas and it's and I was uh, and I wanted to give the audience a sense of the cultural um, the, the dynamic history of the Torres Strait with the movement of people, and it was a German audience. So, and I, you know, so I, so I'm, so both my parents are from Erub, from Darnley Island, yeah. But if we go back beyond that, then it's also, and Mary, my CC there, so it's also the connection on my father's side, on our father's side, that goes to New Caledonia. And when he came as a missionary teacher, um, and on again on my father's side to Rotuma, yeah. so and Rotuma's just and it's all, all islanders across the Pacific. Islanders everywhere just moved, so like just in such distances and in really big numbers. So there's kind of that side, and then on my mother's side, Singapore and Jamaica. Yeah. So it is that thing of, it's that you, you, um, it's that kind of that dynamic history of migration that's created who islanders are so that so people will say but um so that makes you and even this strange guy from victoria who I, he was interviewing me the other day that so what is it that makes you an islander I was like oh my god <laughs> it's like have you not you've had the book like <laughs> like what kind of a question is that but yes i bit my tongue wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. um Katie's got a question. Hey, hey Leah. Um, Hi. Just a question. You know, obviously a lot of these masks are, have been collected um, quite a while ago and there's that, you know, trying to maintain that cultural practice in, in the mask making. But I was just wondering, with the climate challenge and environmental challenge that's happening in the Torres Strait, is that impacting mask making and those cultural practices into like more contemporary kind of spaces or access to animals and things like that? Is there any challenges? To um, uh, certainly, I think so. Climate change. So thinking of turtle habitats, absolutely. So, um, so. The washing away of nesting beaches, um, warmer sand temperature. Mm. Warmer sand temperature means um, more female turtles because it's the temperature in the sand that determines whether the tur whether the hatchling will be male or female. Yeah. So I mean, there could come a day when there'll be no turtles because there aren't enough male turtles. Yeah. So this, yeah. So absolutely, it's so, and that's a. That's a scary kind of future thing, but it's kind of it seems far enough away to not be as scary as it actually is. Mm. I think. Um, mm. I'm trying to think. What about you? What can you think of, Alec, in terms um, of? I don't know. Um, but people aren't. But people aren't using not, turtle shells so much in their work. But uh, so people are doing other things yeah. using other materials. I think there yeah. was a beautiful mask from Uncle Ricardo where he that he made on Murray Island of. Um, of just the kind of the, f the flake of mm, turtle mm, shell. Mm. So it's not really something that people are, um, mm. are working with. Mm. And then at the same time, I think if people wanted to, there, is, there are incredible stockpiles of hawksbill turtle shell in Japan <laughs> that, you know, would be nice if like if artists could wanted to work with it, I'm sure we could try to, to source it. So it's that thing of, and you know, like I hey. says, mm. people aren't killing turtles to work with the shell. It's like, you, you, yeah, mm, it's, um, mm, yeah, true, but true. good question. Alec, did you want to um, respond I, to that too? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know to be honest. Yeah, no, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for turtles, yeah, no, we, yeah, we're basically too, I guess, concerned about um, the erosion that affect, like, if you erode the beach, erode so much, now you get to rocky area. Then the turtles come, but it's not for art practice. It's more of a, the sustainability of the actual turtle. Yeah. Wow, as a, yeah. Wow. yeah. So places like Rain Island, which is off that mm. north coast, mm. um, 
So some time ago they just started taking in sand and putting sand there because, because if you've seen the nesting, it's like when they've done counts, there might be 10,000 turtles, like seven to 10,000 turtles will come up in one night to lay. So it is that if, this, if there's no sand and turtles are digging up the nests of other turtles to lay their eggs, it's mm. like that's where the stuff, that's where it, you know, where it starts to fall apart mm. there. Yeah. Yeah. And then that whole thing, if, if, they're, if they, so, and if a turtle can't lay its eggs, um, and it has to, it, it will just release them into the water, yeah? And they die because they, you know, they need to be in the sand to have some air to, to yeah? So, so, yeah, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of um, kind of things wow. around that. But it's, it's just, they're just amazing, aren't they? Yeah. They're just fascinating. Yeah, what I find really interesting, just sort of, uh, um, connecting turtle shell with the patterns or carvings or designs or mineral um, uh, that we do as modern day artists um, like um, I don't know the common zigzag patterns um, the zigzag we call it uh, in language we call it urui um, which means it simply sort of looks like a a creature's, for example, a crocodile teeth that creates the zigzag pattern. Um, and we call, like, you know how if there's a painting on the wall, it's a, 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 a picture on the wall, a, a print, that's a traditional rectangle or square, that's that. But if it's a, if an islander does a funny shape, not the tri uh, triangle or square, we call it karalad. And karalad means in our Western Island language is like the turtle shell, but it's not referring to the actual turtle flake. It's, refer it's re referencing the fretwork, the cutouts of the ancestors on the turtle shell. Wow. Yeah. I just thought I'd yeah. mention that one. Yeah. Alec are going, I'm going to write a paper. <laughs> <laughs> but the turtle shell, I think it's really a beautiful. Um, uh, uh, Thing, yeah, because it is. Um, of the transparency, the different colors, and I notice a lot of songs, um, even of the boat days, uh, the, the lugger boat, the pearling industry, or even ancient stuff. They always, um, when they're talking about, oh, such a smooth, zone. for example, like this boat, we're singing about this boat, and it's so swift or smooth or whatever, good sailing, fast boat, whatever, and they compare it to, oh, it's like a spinning top on a turtle shell. It's so smooth. And we have many songs of that. And we can sing one tonight too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I like singing in language. Mm. Wow. I think we have come to the end of our time. In, I'm, I'm getting eyes. <laughs> I'm getting the... We, huh? Can we end with the song? We can do that. Yeah, that would be awesome. But, mm -hmm. and, and, um, so, then, so we'll have the song and then we'll have to say goodnight. But thank you so much for being here. And I think, Alec, you're going to say something about my book. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I can, of course. I should turn this you should do it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. You do that now? Yeah, let's oh. do that now. Excellent. Okay, so, oh, the way. Oh, and, oh, oh man. And, Family. Okay, yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh, and everything. Oh, look what I've done now. Oh, say bye. You got it? Yeah, got it. Okay. I grabbed that. Well, um, boy, um, uh, babat, I like me to be so pugin, nibika, I could a requa in a mayuaka, um, Nataya Nitmonica, uh, Inuktusi, uh, Atasbar, Ula Yankudo. I keep moods in me. Sorry, I get emotional. Mask. Sissy, I'm, um, I want to say um, I'm so honored to be here to launch your book, Mask Histories. So. Oh, thank <clears> you. <throat>
I will cool that room. So this is a song. Um, oh, are we off to the song part, singing part? Yes, please. Yes. So this is one of the songs we, um, we wrote as a That um, just explaining that song, so it, it's saying Ngulmun Wanal, Ngulmun Wanal. This is these are our spinning tops. These are our spinning tops. Um, look at us and uh, notice us as we spin our tops. Um, and then these are our spinning tops. And the last word is um, uh, the last line is Ngulmun Wanal Kerariab Tadaminu. We spin our tops on top of turtle shells. That's all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alec. I have no more to say, but thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Um, I can spend a bit of time signing, um, uh, but there are people who know there is um, a restaurant booking down the road somewhere, so I think my husband and daughter know the details for that. So take yourselves there, and I will join you, um, but I will also go up here now with my brand new book signing pen um, <laughs> and sign some books. Thank you.